G'day everyone, welcome to howtoplaythesax.com. My name is Matthew and what I thought I'd like to do today is start off a question and answer series. I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of questions in my members forums, been getting a lot of emails and questions here on YouTube as well. So I thought I'd start a Q&A kind of series and answer some fairly common questions. So the first question, Question number one today, Ethan has sent me an email and he has said, Hey Matthew, is it a good idea to learn saxophone without learning clarinet first? Good question, Ethan. Is it a good idea to learn saxophone without learning clarinet first? Short answer, yes, it's always a good idea to learn saxophone, always. Obviously I'm biased, but I play clarinet too. I teach clarinet to, um, to primary school kids. I, my first instrument was recorder, you know, a little plastic recorder that you learn when you're a little tiny kid at primary school. Then I moved on to clarinet. Then when I was 15, I got my first saxophone and haven't looked back since. So is it a good idea to learn saxophone without learning clarinet first? Short answer, yes. Long answer, if you've got the time, if you've got the inclination, then yes, it is a good idea to learn clarinet first. Now, let's put a few caveats around that. As an adult, as a as no, as an adult, if you're over the age of 20, let's just for the sake of the argument, 20, 21, do you have time to learn clarinet before you learn saxophone? Well, possibly not. If you're a 40 something, if you're a 50 something, if you're a 60 something year old, well, nah, just go for it. Go for your saxophone. Saxophone every time. However, if you're, if you are a little kid, if you are in grade four, maybe grade five, if you're a 10 year old, if you're, if you're a nine year old, if you're a 10 year old, maybe actually learning clarinet might be a good thing to start with because Clarinet, the fingering is very, very similar. The mouth with your clarinet, the embouchure, is you will develop your embouchure muscles much more easily as a young kid, as a young young music student on a clarinet than you will on a saxophone. As a 10-year-old, as an 11-year-old, a saxophone is actually quite a big instrument. It's Your fingers aren't quite big enough to stretch just yet. Maybe 11, 12 year old, yeah, it could go either way. Saxophone, clarinet, clarinet, saxophone, whatever's good for you. But if you are a parent of a young, of a young music student, if your student happens to be nine years old or 10 years old, nah, go the clarinet. Everywhere else, six of one, half a dozen the other. If you're an adult, I would go the saxophone every time. Great question, hope that helps there, Ethan. Okay, second question on my list. Ahmed writes, Hi Matthew, please help. I'm looking to buy a second hand or a cheaper new saxophone. I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace, but I don't know which one to choose. What is the best saxophone to get for a beginner? Ahmed, what an awesome question. Million dollar question. What is the best saxophone to get for a beginner? That's a difficult question to answer. It's a bit like saying, what is the best car to buy? Now, okay, suddenly that opens up a big can of worms. What is the best car to buy? Well, arguably, if you've got a million squillion dollars and dollars don't mean anything, the dollars don't matter, well, you'd probably maybe go for your Formula One racing car or maybe you'd go for a Maserati or a BMW. But maybe if you're also in the sort of reality camp where dollars do matter. Perhaps your stock standard stock standard car will get you from A to B. It will do good things for you. It will keep the rain off you as you're driving in the rain. It will keep you safe. It'll have a steering wheel. It'll have doors to get in and out of. Same deal with saxophones. What is the best saxophone to buy for a beginner? I used to be of the school of thought that you never, ever, 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 ever buy a saxophone that is named after a fish or an animal or a planet. Now that kind of covers a whole heap of fairly, shall we say, no-name brands. In the past, that used to be true. Fast forward to now, you know, these days, 2019 and, you know, 2018, 2019, 2020 and, and beyond, 
Manufacturers have got it together. I think with the whole sort of online review thing, if you make a crap saxophone, pretty soon people who buy it are going to put up some kind of review on your website or on millions of other websites that says, hey, this brand is a really crap saxophone. Okay, so what that means is that a lot of manufacturers these days are making really good ones. You can buy a cheap saxophone for under sort of brand new, for under 300 odd US dollars, under sort of 150, 200 pounds. Uh, you know, a similar kind of equation for euros and all other international currencies. Cheap saxophones actually these days aren't too bad. Another caveat, cheap saxophones generally have really bad mouthpieces, generally. So my suggestion to you, Ahmed, what is the best saxophone to, to get for a beginner? The best saxophone is the one that is in your hands. The best saxophone is the one that you can afford. Yet, yeah, if we all had a million dollars, yes, we would all buy the top of the range Yamaha. We would all buy the top of, top of the range Yanagisawa. Uh, we would all buy the top of the range Selma. There are a few brands, Keelworth. Um, there's quite a few others that are really, really, really good in terms of quality, in terms of manufacture, in terms of the way it all works and, and all the mechanisms and all the springs. And yeah, of course, if we had a million gazillion dollars, we'd buy the most expensive saxophone because really chances are high, it's the best one. But let's talk reality. The best saxophone is the one that you can afford. May I make a suggestion with that? Further to that, there are men and anyone who else is listening. The best mouthpiece for a beginner saxophone is a different question. The best mouthpiece for a beginner saxophonist is probably not going to come with the cheaper saxophone. There's hundreds and hundreds of no name, no name brands saxophones. Go for it. Buy one. Do some reviews. Checking, you know, check, search some forums, search some websites. You know, go onto Amazon. Check the reviews for all the cheap, cheap saxophones. You will pretty find that most of them are pretty good. Mouthpieces. Please, if you're going to buy a cheap, cheap, cheap saxophone, get yourself a Yamaha 4C mouthpiece. Yamaha 4C. C is for cookie. That is good enough for me. Let us see for cat. Yamaha 4C mouthpiece. If you spend 40, 50, 60 dollars on one of those and put it on your cheap saxophone, it'll sound great. It will be easier to play. It will be awesome. It will be a great start. Then maybe as time goes on, yeah, you save up a few thousand dollars, three, four, five thousand dollars, and get yourself a U-Butte saxophone. I would recommend going down that path. The best saxophone, Ahmed, is the saxophone that you can afford with the caveat of buying a Yamaha 4C mouthpiece to put onto it. Because the one that'll come, the mouthpiece that comes with a cheap saxophone, bzz, it's just gonna make life difficult for you. It might work, but it might not. Yamaha 4C mouthpieces on any saxophone, including cheap ones, go for it. All right. Hopefully that helps. All right, moving on. Jesma. Jesma has written to me and she has said, Hi, Matthew. I am finding the neck strap uncomfortable. I have a small short frame and have my neck strap done up quite tight. I've transferred to a shoulder strap, but I'm still not quite comfortable. Should I have my shoulder strap on my left or my right shoulder? Okay, Jesma. Part one of the question here. Left or right shoulder for a shoulder strap. You can get saxophone straps that kind of work like a seat belt. If you are playing the saxophone, you want your shoulder strap to be on your left shoulder. Your left shoulder like a seat belt. So it goes to your left and then your saxophone is here on your, close to your right hip. So the shoulder strap, Jesma, left shoulder. Part B of your question. I've also been getting very sore thumbs when I practice. Does this mean I'm putting too much pressure on holding my saxophone and the strap isn't doing an appropriate job? Short answer, yes. There, Jesma, if you are getting sore thumbs, then your strap is not 
holding the weight of your saxophone. You are trying to, more than likely, trying to hold up your saxophone probably with your right thumb. Saxophones are heavy. That's why we have neck straps or shoulder straps. Personally, I prefer the neck strap. You can get harness kind of straps. You can get seatbelt kind of straps. Personally, I prefer the neck strap. But hey, you do you, Jesma. If the shoulder strap is working out for you, go the shoulder strap. But adjust it so that the neck strap, the shoulder strap, the saxophone strap that holds it up, adjust it so when you pivot your saxophone, the mouthpiece goes right into your mouth. Now, further to that, maybe if you're having a bit of trouble with your neck strap, may I make a suggestion? Here is my neck strap. I've got, um, you know, it's nicely padded. This is kind of wetsuit material. You can get fluffy ones, you can get thick ones, you can get thin ones. There are the default one, the default neck strap usually is sort of about that wide. And I find, yeah, that can be very uncomfortable. So step one, Jesmo, if you are short, if, you, if your neck strap may, maybe is just a little bit too big. Step one, use your collar. Can you put your neck strap, put your collar up? Put your neck strap under the collar. Sorry if I'm banging on the microphone here. Put the neck strap under your collar. That will give it just a little bit extra padding. That'll give it a little, just a little bit extra. It, it'll make it make the neck strap a little bit smaller because you've raised it up just a bit higher. Step. If that doesn't work for you, maybe just maybe another suggestion. If the collar's not working out for you, then get yourself a hand towel. You know, just an ordinary bathroom hand towel, maybe a tea towel, fold it up, fold it up nicely and put that over your shoulders. Now that I've done that, I've folded it probably in, depending on the size of your towel, obviously. Here is my towel. I will put that over my shoulders. Then I put my neck strap over that. Now, okay, yeah, it's a bit ugly, but it, hey, if you're... um. It's probably not, you're not going to be the coolest, coolest bloke, the coolest guy or girl on the, in the street. Um, Jesma, maybe you can get a nice towel and you will be the coolest, coolest woman with a towel around your neck. <laughs> Who knows? But if you have your, the, adding, a, adding more padding, that's hard to say, adding more padding. So therefore, you've got more padding, that's a bit more comfortable, you can lower your neck strap, you can then, here's one I prepared earlier, when you pivot your saxophone, it should go directly into, into your mouth. Pivot the sax, it goes into your mouth, it doesn't go up into your eye, it doesn't go down into your chin, you don't have to lean down, you don't have to lean up, it should be just nice and, nice and square, hold your head like you normally would, and you pivot and the saxophone goes nicely into your mouth. You are using your thumbs, your right thumb and your left thumb and your right thumb and your left thumb. You are using them to pivot, to balance the saxophone. You are not using your thumbs to hold the saxophone up. Neck strap does all the work. Your thumbs merely do the moving of your saxophone. Jesma, I hope that helps. Anyway, I've had three really good questions from three wonderful beginner saxophonists. Please, if you have any questions about learning how to play the saxophone, please let me know. Please let me know via my website at howtoplaythesax.com. Leave some comments below here. Ask your questions below. Visit the blog, howtoplaythesax.com forward slash blog. There will be opportunities to ask questions there. Join up, become a member at howtoplaythesax.com. We've got heaps of lessons, heaps of saxophone lessons, part of the lesson process, the membership access inside the back end at howtoplaythesax.com. There is a forum. Members can ask questions. I will answer those questions similarly to here, but there's text-based forums. Please ask in there as well. And I'll use those questions here to, um, to because your question if you've got a question, chances are really high, so does someone else have exactly the same question. Please, let me help you learn how to play the saxophone. If you have any questions at all about your sax, about how to play the sax, about learning saxophone, please let me know. My name is Matthew. Thanks heaps for joining me here in this question and answer session. 
I'll see you in another video at another time at howtoplaythesax.com. Thanks. Thank <music> you.